determine ca the cardinal number of sets. The number of elements in a set is called the cardinal number of a set or the cardinality of the set. The symbol N with the parentheses of the set is read as, for example, N of A represents the cardinal number of set A. For example, here we are given uh, a set. This is set K. And we want to find the cardinal number of this set. And when they ask you that, you just simply want to know how many members, if they were people, how many people are in that set? Well, all you have to do is count them. Um, there's an A, there's an L, there's a G, there's an E, there's a B, and there's an R. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six different or unique members in the set. So N of K would equal six. Now notice I did not count uh, the A twice because A is a member or an element of that set. Doesn't matter how many times it appear, you can think of it as a person. A is there in that set. Um, so you're not going to count it twice if a member or an element in a set repeats himself. We want to know for the cardinal number how many different unique members there are in the set. Next we have set B which contains 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3. So to find the cardinal number of that set I would need to find what is N of B. And what would you say N of B is? If you said three, that is correct. There are only three members in that set, and those three members are one, two, and three. So again, remember, if elements are repeated in a set listing, you do not count them twice. You don't count them more than once when determining the cardinal number of the set. Okay, so if you're given a uh, sequence of numbers and asked to find the cardinal number of the set, uh, it's really an easy step to um, finding out how many members are in that set if they're in sequence. So if you have consecutive numbers that include all of the numbers, uh, you can have that case. You can also have a case or scenario where you have consecutive even or consecutive odd. Now, if you have consecutive even or odd, then that means you don't have all of your numbers. Remember, you're only going to have half of your numbers. Uh, but if they're consecutive, just regular consecutive numbers, they will have all the numbers in there. So here's a case, let's see. Set M has 117, 118, 119, 120. So these are consecutive uh, numbers. So they follow one after another. And when that is the case, um, step one is just find the difference between the first and the last number. So take the first number and the last number that's given and subtract the two. Okay, that's as easy as, as it seems. Take the first, take the last number, subtract it. In this case, I get 137, take away 117, which is 20. And then the step two is add one and you're done. So there are 21 members in that set. So we would say N of M equals 21. Again, take the first number, take the last numbers, subtract them, then add one. That is all there is to it, to finding the cardinal number of a set. So just to prove to you that there are 21, you don't need to do this by any means when you do your homework. I just want to show you that that's proof that this uh, formula actually works. 
Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and list out uh, all of those numbers. And if we count them from 117 all the way to 137, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So you notice it is true that uh, set M does contain uh, 21 members. So just a recap, take the first and the last number, subtract them, and then add one. Cardinal number of a set. All right, so in this set, set B, notice you have consecutive numbers, but you have consecutive even numbers, which means you don't have all your numbers. You're missing half of them. Anytime you have only even or odd numbers, you have only half of your numbers. So for example, if I say the numbers from one to 10, uh, my even numbers would be 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. Uh, it is missing my odd numbers of 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. So again, anytime you have even or odd, you only have half of your numbers. So there's going to be one important step that you're going to do in there because that's the case. So step one, though, is still the same thing. Take the first number, take the last number, subtract them. So when I subtract 306, take away 106, that gives me 200. Now, step two, I'm not going to add one because I don't have all of my numbers. I have half of my numbers. So step two is to divide by two. In other words, what's half of 200? Half of 200 is 100. So 100 would be half of that. So then you add 1, which means you have 101 numbers that are in set B. N of B equals 101. Here we're asked to find the cardinal number of this set. Uh, and it may look difficult only because you have fractions, but uh, whenever you're given fraction, you want to focus on either the top or the bottom. So let's go ahead and focus on the top since the top seems to be consecutive numbers, one, two, three, four, which means it's going to go all the way to um, 98 here. Uh, so let's use the top as our source of reference. So you're going to do the same as you've always done. Take the first, take the last number, and subtract the two. So the first number is 1. The last number is 98. That's going to give me 97. Next, I'm going to, because they are consecutive, it includes all the numbers. I'm not missing any, so I don't need to divide by 2. Um, our last step is just to add 1 to that. And when we add 1, set C has 98 members, so we would say N of C equals 98. In this example, we're asked to find the cardinal number of the following set. Now, set A contains a set of integers between negative 20 and 20. In other words, we want to know how many numbers are between those numbers. So it would include numbers that are greater than negative 20, but less than 20. If you were to visualize it on a ruler or number line, uh, it's going to look like so. Again, we want to know uh, how many numbers there are between them. Well, there's a method that you can use to help you in counting those numbers. Uh, you could just think about the fact that um, on the positive end, uh, you would have uh, 19 numbers uh, between 1 and 19. Because again, we want between negative 20 and 20. It does not include 20. 
So there are 19 numbers on that positive side. Uh, there are also 19 numbers on the negative side going from negative 1 to negative 19. Uh, and then remember we also have 0, so we have to include that in there as well because it's a number. And when we add those, that's going to give us a total of 39 numbers. So we would say that the cardinal number n of a equals 39. And now we're at a checkpoint. I want to see how well you understand the concept on your own. So pause the video and see if you can find n of a of the following given set. So recall to find the cardinal number of a set. And here we're given uh, consecutive numbers. So all you need to do is take the first number and the last number and subtract 2 and then add 1. That's it. So when we subtract the 2, we get 6,301. Add 1 to that, and that gives us 6301, which is choice D.